Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays of Binding of Isaac Edward Plus. 11 wins in a row, a glorious palindromic, I was going to call it an even number, but literally false. Um, JQ19, WJ83, and for once, we don't have an absurdly crazy out of control start. We just have very, very good stats. That's the, that's the main thing right now. I mean, from HP, tears, damage, even speed is okay. Everything is uh, pretty much going according to plan right now. No complaints. Well, one complaint. We have Jar instead of Jar of Flies. That's, that's a small rip, just a little rip on that one. Life goes on. Who knows? Maybe we'll find the time. Maybe we'll, this will be the run where we finally use Jar. Um... Effectively for the first time ever. Maybe it'll be an essential and indispensable Part of our build, but probably not because we've had it, you know a thousand other times and it's done very little for us, but Anyway You know what blew my mind yesterday, so I, I was watching uh, a little TV Batman Returns was on if you're not, there's a couple of things that blow my mind about Batman Returns every time it's on. I've seen part of it, like, two times in the past year. Um, the first one is that my parents let me see it as a child. I, I remember not, I don't remember being at the movie. The movie came out, I think, in, like, 1991, which is too early for me to have had any recognizance there. But I remember my mom telling me the story of how she took me to see the movie. Hmm. Well, it looks like the jar will not be uh, doing too much for us here, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, and at, at a point in the movie, at a, at a pivotal moment, Penguin uh, bites some dude's nodes off. Sorry, let me rephrase, because I think I said nodes. He bites his nose off, and a bunch of blood pours out of his face. It's not an appropriate movie for a, uh, a child of the age that I was when I saw it. Now... I've told the story before. My parents, well, my dad did take me to see the Adams family as well. You, it might strike you. Get out of here with this poker chip, dude. It might strike you that my parents took me to a number of inappropriate movies. I'm gonna level with you, the Adams family. I can't really fault my dad for that one. I've seen that movie probably ten times since that fateful first day. There's like. That's got to be G-rated. If it's not G-rated, it's got to be extremely close. Honestly, I just, I like Sacrificial Altars just a little cooler. I hate to say it. Um, but yeah, Batman Returns. Well, B Batman 1988, 1989, whatever one it was, it was like my favorite movie of all time. Uh, at the time. So, I'm sure my mom was like, you know... What can I do? He, he loves the Batman. Let's take him to see the new one. Anyway, so yeah, not appropriate for a, a three-year-old, in case you're wondering. In case you got a three-year-old, you're wondering if you should play them a 30-year-old uh, movie this weekend just to calm them down. Would recommend against it. The other one is that I always forget that Christopher Walken has not always looked like I remember Christopher Walken looking. <laughs> like, in that movie... He's not necessarily young, but he has like a, like a youthful visage about him, which I know is a weird thing to say. Well, that's another hematemesis. Paralysis. You know, we'll just head down to the next floor. I think I'm to gauze it up immediately. Hopefully this gets us two birds stoned at once by removing a great curse. Sure, why not? Anyway. I always forget Christopher Walken. And I, I see it many times, you know. Christopher Walken. Willem Dafoe, Steve Buscemi. If you go, uh, you, you find pictures of them when they were younger, you're like, wow. They didn't always look like they looked in my head. Uh, run. I know that's a very common... Uh, well, it's a very obvious sentiment. You're like, yeah, of course he, did. he wasn't born on Earth as a 65-year-old man. You know, with wrinkles, and he talks like this, but... I feel like it's hard for some people to get over, you know? The idea that, like, the people that you see that are old were not always old. 
they started at the same age that you did, zero or one, depending on where you're born. Some places count it a little differently philosophically. It's, it's caused, I don't want to call them arguments, but disagreements with my wife. You know, she is born early 1992. I am born late 1988. So really, in my head, I'm like, how many months are there actually between us? All of 89, all of 90, all of 91, and then one month on either side. How many years apart are we? She always says four, I always say three. 90% of the time, there's a three-year age gap. That one other 10% of the time, I'll admit, you know, there is a four-year age gap there, but... And I'm not sensitive about it, I'm more just like... I'm a stickler for the rules <laughs> and for the procedures, so I get myself into trouble because I'm like, well, I understand why you might want to think that, but on the other hand, on a strictly objective level, most of the time I'm pretty good about not going down that road, but I, it, it's taken me lessons of learning to get there, you know what I mean? In, in Korea, also, it, it's even more confusing um, because when you're born, you're one year old. I know that sounds ridiculous but you know just bear with me for a second because it's the honest to goodness truth like when you're born you're one so you're what we would call your first birthday party in north america is actually your second birthday see that doesn't make it sound as crazy because it really should be your second birthday your first birthday was the day on which you were birthed so that on a literal level i can't disagree with that one Okay, I want this for a familiar, please. You think this will give me one, too? It doesn't count as a familiar. All right. I mean, Gimpy, I'm, I'm stoked to have. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I don't know if we want to go to our... I don't know if we want to go to our curse room right now. I think we'll try it. But it's modest degrees of spice. Anyways, this, I don't have any patience for these kind of, like, discussions anymore. It's not your fault. It's because of the industry in which I'm in, you know, I've gone through them so much before. I, you know how many times I've had the argument of when I started kindergarten? That's why I always bring it up. I'm like, I started kindergarten when I was three. People are like, no you didn't. Just because that's not the way they do it in freaking Indiana, doesn't mean it's not the way they do it up here. Plus, not to mention... If, if I was, who, who, it's really more of an indictment of you and the circle of friends you roll with. You, you're running with a lot of people who like to brag about when they entered kindergarten. What kind of Bush League operation you got going on here? Anyway, it happens all the time. It's the same philosophy as the, oh, it's minus 35 there. Yeah, that's a little cold, but I live in Svalbard, Norway. Minus 35, I'll be out getting a suntan. We don't need to go down that road. I know where that road goes. It's a big blue and white sign that says Finn. We're moving on here. I like a lot of this right now. I like, uh... I like Gimpy with a positive luck stat. I, I don't even mind, uh... I mean, like, Lil Harbinger is actually, I think, pretty sick for us when we also have Hive Mind. You're not gonna love this one, but we're gonna do it anyway. Um, because it's my party and I'll cry if I want to. We're in a fragile time, though. I, I would have loved for, uh, for Sac Altar to have, or, is it, a, it is Sacrificial Altar, yeah. I would have, just the idea of carrying around an altar is a little strange to me. That's why I was like, is it Sacrificial, you know, I don't know, handbag? Please. And I knew he was getting God. I thought maybe we could... We could step on this and get it to go. Do you think this will work? Uh... So not worth it, by the way. But, like, there was just something wrong with my brain there. I was like, philosophically, I have to handle this. For me. This is, a, it's, it's my quest. Dude, Judas' shadow is a huge right here. Especially with Gimpy. Um, I think one of the best things we could do is... You know, we don't have to die right away, but with Gimpy, we would definitely prefer um, 
to wait until we maybe see like a spirit heart, then die and respawn, and then oh my god, our flies are gonna be so good. It's not gonna solve any HP related problems, but so we're we're not picking this up just because we don't have to yet. But we're we're gonna enjoy the fruits of the Dark Prince's crown for a bit, and then we'll we'll then we'll talk. I told this story though, but like I I do feel like. Birthdays are like a weird thing, right? Like I I wonder, I was going to say I bet, but I think that's that's dangerous reasoning. <laughs> I wonder if you looked at like professional athletes, if you would find like more people had birthdays that were late relative to the cutoff of when like youth leagues decide, you know, you're a bantam, you know, you're a whatever, you know, I, I forget all the divisions, but because I, I remember, like, I lived in a weird catchment for our for our softball leagues when I was a kid. So we didn't, like, have a lot of kids that lived in the area that could be on the team. So we had, like, a huge age range for our team. And, like, I was on the younger side, usually, and had a late birthday. So when I'm, like, 10, born in November. And I have like a 12 year old kid on my team who's born in January. There's like a like a 75 pound difference between us. <laughs> and like one of us is is cranking homers, and it went for the other teams too. Like I was a pitcher, right? You bet. You know whether or not you're going to be able to pitch to a kid as soon as he got up there. Nobody was getting up there, and you're like, ah, I wonder how this guy's going to do. Then he cracks a home run. You look at him, and you're like, this guy's. Uh, 11 years old and he has a mustache. You can't pitch to him. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have the heat necessary to get out of this situation. But I, I've told a story recently on the show, but, and we're, we're just gonna toast ourselves here because we got some spirit arts coming our way. Um, I told this show recently, or this story recently on the show, but one of the guys that I played with um, was like a large kid for one. He had an early birthday and every time we played a game, you know, usually a kid will bring like a water bottle or something like that. He would bring a two liter bottle of Pepsi and drink it over the course of the game. How are you supposed to pitch underhand to a kid that's, you know, 215 pounds in seventh grade? He's all hopped up on like, you know, 900 calories of pure glucose. You can't, you can't pitch to him. He's going to hit a home run every time. It's just physics. Anyway, I hope he's doing okay. Because that softball league didn't really... It wasn't a feeder into the majors. You know, let's put it that way. <laughs> I hope he... I hope he found... Uh, a way to balance his love of... Sugary beverages with his... Desire to live a long and healthy life. But anyway... So I, I wonder about that, you know? I, want, I also wonder if you wouldn't find... And these... I'm literally just spitballing. I wonder if you mapped, like... If you took the average class, and the, obviously due to sample size, you'd want to get, you know, like thousands of quote-unquote average classes, but... And you looked at um, the birthdays of the best performing students. I wonder if you would find a correlation. I wonder if you would find that, uh, you know, students... Because there's a, a full year difference, right? I don't know what you would find, by the way, because I did well in school. I mean, I'm... It, Data is the plural of anecdote, you know what I mean? But um, I did well in school with a late birthday. Did I do well in school because I had a late birthday? Maybe I could have invested my time into sports instead, but because I was proportionally a little bit smaller than the other uh, kids who had had, you know, another 10% of their life to grow before they had to join the league, basically. Um, maybe instead, uh, subconsciously on some level, I went, hey, well, I better focus on school instead. Or maybe, like, early birthdays tend to do better in school because, uh, you know, it's not really fair, right? If you're, like, you're going into first grade and everybody's between the ages of five and six, but somebody's really, like, 6.7 and some people are, like, 5.1, you know? So they've had, like, another, like, 33% of their life to learn some of this stuff. Anyway, I'm not, I and mean, maybe there's no correlation at all. I'm just spitballing. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't, I don't know if there's a way to. First off, I guess I, I should say I don't really know if it matters. But then, secondly, beyond that, I don't know if there's a way to make it more fair, unless you had a, your own school for every uh, student. 
Seems unlikely. Take me down to the next floor, please. I'm just, I'm, I'm spitballing about this. I think about that with respect to sports. School, I don't know, but I bet in sports, because, you know, like, it, here's the way that I look at, like, the average person's motivation, okay? And I think school is a really good example for this. Uh, I think I did well in school, because when I was a kid, uh, before I went to school, my mom and dad read to me, like, all the time. I truly believe this. They read to me all the time. By the time I went to kindergarten, um, I, I was able to read myself, which made the first few years of school very easy, because that's like what they're trying to hit you with, right? They're trying to teach you how to read, because most people that come to kindergarten don't know how to read, at least not in those days. I don't know if it still works the same way. So I think the way that motivation works for the average person, myself included, is you know you get assigned a task, you do well at it, you receive praise, and you go, that felt good, I want to do more of that. So I really, when I think about, like, why why am I quote-unquote book smart? I don't know, maybe there's a genetic component on some level, but I have some family members who are pretty dumb. I don't know if that holds up, but again, these are just plural anecdotes. I think, uh... I, I really come down to this idea that I was, like, well-prepared for, you know, my first couple of years. I define my identity around doing well in it, and then, you know, here we are. A job that requires no college degree whatsoever, but can't win them all. Um, sure, I'll take. Then we'll grab this, too. I could easily see it going, you know, a different way. Imagine, you know, you're born in... Well, I don't know why I'm so fixated on the birthday part of this, but, you know, imagine you go... Uh, well, here's why. Imagine you go, you know, try out for... Or you, you join, like, a super young like hockey league and you've been alive for 60 months and some of your teammates and, and opponents have only been alive for like 45 months you know i think that gives you a distinct advantage so all of a sudden you're putting up seven goals a game and you're like well this is where i'm going to dedicate my time in the future i don't know that's just the lens of what i'm at which i'm looking through it right now i don't believe and if you do i really don't have a problem until you know, it becomes part of, like, you know, legislature, <laughs> I guess. Or, or if a doctor's like, you know, I, if I go see a doctor and um, they're like, how are you feeling? And I'm like, oh, I got a sore throat. They're like, what's your star sign? I'm like, Sagittarius. They're like, oh, Mercury's in retrograde right now. So just wait a little bit and you'll probably get over it. You know, I I have no problem with the astrology um, as, as an entertainment thing, of course. I don't think we're, we're running the risk of there being astrology clinics opening up that are going to supersede real medicine. So I'm mostly just begging the question right now. But um, I don't I don't believe that, like, you know, the sign at which you're born under determines basically anything about your life. But I do think that, like, when you're born in relation to your peers, that you're going to be around for, like, you know, 15, 20 years maybe before you start to set off on your own. Um, I think that might have some determined, that might have some influence at least. Just interesting to think about. I'm sure, by the way, that this is myriad studies have probably been done on this. I would, I would love to know the, the results because I'm just, just an interesting thing to think about right now. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to hit that with a no for now. It's, it's a painful no, as you could tell, but I got to hit that with a no for now. Dank Depths 2. We're pretty much, like, exactly on pace here for Boss Rush, which I mostly, you know, I just use it as, like, a marker. A marker for, for where we're going, how we're doing, etc., etc. I mean, the run is really good on a damage standpoint, without a doubt. I'm, I'm very pro that. Maybe we'll get a card here. Honestly, you're going to hate that. The thing is, I'm really, I, if, if I'm being straight up with you, there's two real axes where I think I can improve my Isaac results. One of them is not picking up garbage items because it would be funny to pick them up. Um, if we can make it work, sure. But if, you know, not just doing it for doing its sake. Um, the other one is I really think if we stop cherishing the Yara runes forever and start, you know, trying to r realize some of the yield on them as soon as possible, I think we're going to be very happy. I think that could actually... Like, one in 500 runs, I think that could turn a loss into a win. 
That's not a huge number for us. I don't know, it might even be like 1 in 250. Now we're starting to get into, you know, actually helpful territory. But anyway. What were we talking about? Basically nothing at all. I just I want to figure out what birth month leads to uh, terrible drivers. Terrible, selfish drivers. And if we could just, you know, put a moratorium on doing it like nine months before that. I got a lot of ideas, is all I'm saying. Um, but I do, you know, getting back to like the school stuff. Again, I've gotten in trouble for my opinions on school. People really do not like the opinion that I hold, albeit quietly now, that is like, eh, kids in Canada don't do enough homework. <laughs> they could really, I'm not saying they gotta do eight hours a night, but they could definitely fit in some more. Um, so I, I, I have kept my mouth shut about that one, because honestly, I, I don't have much evidence to back it up in the first place. It's just a hunch. Uh, dude, this is a 2020 situation without a doubt, and that's a nothing. But I do think, like, on a more positive level, I'm, like, so thankful my parents got me reading as early as possible. I really feel like that scholastically sets you up nicely. Would recommends. Like, I think about that sometimes. I'm like, why do I have such a... And I, I'm going to toot my own horn slightly. Why do I have such a good linguistic brain uh, relative to the other aspects, you know? Why do I have why do I have a brain that is so good at, um, you know, stringing words together in a way to get my message across and also sound pleasing to the ear? And then, like, oh, in some situations, this word would be inappropriate. What would be more appropriate is this word, and it also carries a little extra subtext because it's used so infrequently that, you know, I, I like, I feel that and I process it relatively quickly I think now if you ask me to rotate a three-dimensional shape in my head I can't do it like I, it, I can do it but it requires way more thought than it does for the average person and I honestly as much as I would like to think that it's due to some morphological difference in my brain that like oh my you know certain areas of my brain were naturally predisposed to be bigger than you know other areas I really think it mostly comes down to probably like on one of my first days of kindergarten my teacher was like wow great job and then my brain was like that feels good <laughs> more divert more blood flow there hey but what about this one that's gonna teach you how to tie your shoes error error we can always wear velcro it did take me a while to learn how to tie my shoes I'm not ashamed to admit it I had a tough love situation that I actually am very grateful for. Um, my second grade teacher, we were watching a movie in class. So I was seven. Remember, late birthday, late birthday. I know you were 15 in second grade, but that's not the way it works up here. Um, I was seven and we were watching a movie and my shoes came undone. I know you're like, just sitting there? I'm like, dude, I told you I was bad at it. Um, and my teacher was like, go out into the hall and you can't come in until you learn how to tie your shoes. Now she would probably be in jail, but I'm very thankful that she gave me that ultimatum. Because what I learned how to do was not tie my shoes, but to be so convincing at pretending to have tied my shoes. And that's a skill that's really helped me out a lot. Not necessarily knowing how to do something, but how to build a case that makes it look like I obviously did something. I'm offended you would even ask. Of course I know how to tie my shoes. I just like to tuck the laces in, because they look nicer that way. It's called being a hype beast, sweetheart. Do we have been blessed with some very, very quick ones today. You like to see it, you love to see it. Sir, could you please, could you spit out a fly, maybe? This one seems like it's going where I need it to go. In a timely fashion. I'm like, no, I'm not really worried about our HP, but I'm like... Let me put it this way. I'm about 5% worried about our HP. I think we're gonna be okay, especially our speed is not amazing, but good enough. Like, I, I kind of vacillate back and forth on, on speed terms, but I'm like... One is a little low. I don't know why I said that, like the start of what is love. One... 
is love. Baby, don't hurt me. One is too low. 1.1. I'm comfortable with it. You know, one is when you're on the freeway. The speed limit is, uh... I'm trying to Americanize this for 45% of my audience. You know, whenever we go down to, like, Washington State, the speed limit is always 70 miles an hour. I feel like 70 miles an hour is, like, 110 kilometers an hour. It's faster than the speed limits on Canadian highways, which tend to be 100. But everybody drives 110 anyway, except for, like, the one weirdo who drives 75. I'm like, dude, why are you driving 75? Look, I get it. Maybe you're anxious. You're still going to die. <laughs> Like, you know, in a way, I almost would respect it more if you got on the freeway. Never do this, by the way. I'm, I want this to be clear. This is for humor's sake only. If you got onto the freeway and you were doing like 30 kilometers an hour, I would be like, I get it. He's scared and he doesn't want to die in a horrific, you know, vehicular incident. So he's going at a speed where if he collides with something, nothing bad's going to happen. I'm like, dude, if you're going 75 and somebody hits you going 100... We're all, we're all going up there. It's not going to save you. You might as well stop impeding the flow of traffic. You're making things harder on everybody. But 1.1 is like being right at that 70 mark. 1 is like, you know, you're, you're going 55. You're like, this is notably slower. Anything more than like 1.5 though is when the... It happens to me. It, it does. Sometimes I'll be on the freeway and the flow of traffic is like, you know, the speed limit's 100 kilometers an hour. I'm comfortable going, you know, up to 120 maybe. The flow of traffic around me is going 140. I'm like, yo, this is not for me. I am going to get into that right lane. And uh, no, I'm just, I understand it's probably safe, but I just, that one's not for me. You guys are real thrill seekers. No, no, you go ahead. You can arrive at the destination 90 seconds before me. That's totally fine. I'm not a slow driver, just to be clear. I drive typically the speed limit and slightly over. I don't trust anybody who says they deliberately drive under the speed limit. That to me, if you're watching this, nobody's buying that when you say it, okay? Just a little, just slightly over the speed limit. It's once we start to get into that, like, you know, markedly over the speed limit territory where I'm like, you know what, I don't know. Mom, can you come and pick me up? Yeah, the other guys are speeding. Okay, I can wait. Where am I going, dude? I had, this is going to actually make uh, a few people's heads explode. They're going to get so angry, so I, I don't even want to bring up this story. But I do because it paints me in a positive light. Um, we went uh, to a different, like, suburb of Vancouver to get dinner on Friday night. Uh, when we were driving back, I was behind, like, a 1998 Infinity. I didn't even know the brand existed back then. Um... It was probably in early 2000s. Look, it, the point is, I'm not judging them based on their car, because our car sucks as well. But I, I kept a measure of it in my mind, because I'm like, that's a car you don't see very often. i got to make sure this guy is okay. Now, the roads were on probably around 60 kilometers an hour is standard. He's doing about 35. So I get around him. I pass him. As soon as I passed him, he got into the lane beside me and we were like approached a traffic light right um so we're stopped at the red light when the light turns green he guns it and then passes me and gets in front of me in the lane again and then starts driving super slow again and i'm like i don't know if this guy's got like a like a psychological problem or a phallological problem <laughs> if you know what i mean i was like what are you so many people, I feel like they have... I hope no, I'm not describing any of my viewers. If I am... Like, consider this your your opportunity to approach me for help, I guess. Why do you have so much ego wrapped up in your drive? Literally, all I'm concerned with when driving is... I want to get home without dying. You know? 
Part of the reason I don't want to be stuck behind somebody doing half of the speed limit is because I'm worried that somebody that's doing the speed limit is going to rear-end me because he's like, why is he going so slow? I wasn't anticipating this. Er, you know, I don't want to run into that situation. So I'm, I'm just trying to get around you for my own safety, basically. But I guess for this guy, it was like... You know, oh, you pass me? Okay, I don't think so. But anyway, I wouldn't have even mind if he passed me again. Because you might be saying, NL, why are you mad that he passed you then? Isn't that the same thing? No, I'm mad because he passed me and was going slow again. <laughs> even if he had this phallological problem. Allegedly. Allegedly phallological problem. He might be completely at the peak of the bell curve of the Gaussian phallological distribution. I doubt it based on his actions, but um, now I'm like, wait a minute. Phallological is related to the phallus, right? That's not like a stamp collector. I think that's a philatelist, which is, you can see where the confusion comes from when you think about the word a little bit, but anyway. I'm mad that he passed me. Well, I was mad. I'm not mad any longer. Because I was also like, ooh, this is gonna... This story alone is gonna make me about 550, so... <laughs> I, can, I can I can swallow my pride for the for the price of a breakfast sandwich. But, um... I'm mad that he passed me, and then... When he got in front of me, he kept going slow. If he passed me, and then was like, You know what? I don't let anybody pass me, but I acknowledge that I was going too slow. As far as I'm concerned, that's a, that's a positive situation. You know, he's got to deal with his own emotional issues at some point, but that's not for me. At least he's moving a little quicker now. Anyway, <laughs> for now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!